This is probably my first time walking around the place. It feels kind of strange and creepy. It's like I've got motion sickness. The church is a big, conspicuous building, so I'm used to seeing it from the outside. I guess what's so off-putting is the contrast between how much I think I know the building versus how little I actually know about it. It should be so obvious though, I mean, it shouldn't come as a surprise to know that a box contains things, right? Come to think of it, I know even less about myself than I previously did. I keep surprising myself again and again. It feels like I'm not even me. But looking at things objectively, maybe this is the real me. However, there's no way for me to know for sure. For some reason, I am exhausted. I still can't concentrate, that's not good. The gun I'm pointing at Clara feels so heavy. It's tiring to go up all these stairs. How many floors does this building have? Four. We're on the third floor. It seems like this central staircase is the only staircase connecting all the floors, which severely narrows down the available escape routes. Looks like Clara's nose stopped bleeding as we were walking. We quickly advance forward. I've already given up memorizing a way back. Neither of us say a word. We're here. Clara speaks plainly as she stands by the door. She looks like a robot who's almost, but not quite, human. Her current mental state must be like what mine normally is. There's not that much of a height difference between me and Clara. Her hair is the same length as mine too, even though it's a different texture. If I usually look like she does now, I must really come off as a weirdo. You go in first. I think a lot of different things, but that's what I end up saying. Okay. Clara opens the door. She then puts her hands together and bows. After a moment's delay, I realize that it's out of deference to me. Pardon the intrusion. Warmth flows in through the doorway. The heating must be on. Someone's in there. The someone I came here to see. Pardon the intrusion. I can't help but say that now that Clara said it. Clara. Something akin to dread suddenly overcomes me. After all, despite all I've done to come see her, there's no guarantee that she'll see me in a positive light. Who will she trust more? The church that can find her, or the girl who comes barging in with a gun and a hostage? I'm curious to find out, but I've got no idea what to expect. What if she's completely unlikable? I don't know if I could get along with her then. Or maybe I should be worrying about me being the completely unlikable one. Hmm? I hear a voice. An unfamiliar voice. The voice of the new girl. I suddenly cast my eyes down. You have a visitor. You must be cold. Come in. Don't be a stranger. Uh, yes, you in the back, too. I look up by reflex. In a single moment, I think about a lot of things, and in a single moment, I forget them. Like a sort of flashback. By the time I realize that this is what anxiety feels like, I can already see the girl. I intended to be more mentally prepared when I first met her, but things have been a bit, shall we say, sudden. I'm so nervous, my eyes are blurring. In my blurred vision, I feel like I can see many different things. Like rain. Or school. Or summer heat. Or laughing with someone. And like a dream, they all suddenly come to mind and disappear as suddenly as they came. But why? The fearful me is already the usual me. I remember how comfortable being fearful can be. Congratulations! She looks at me. At the very least, she's smiling. Sorry to keep you waiting. I give an odd reply, perhaps due to the tension. Why would I say sorry to keep you waiting in response to congratulations? But for just a second, it seemed like the proper thing to say. I just don't get it anymore. That might explain why I'm smiling. Or maybe it's totally unrelated, I don't know. Either way, we both smile. I'm no longer afraid. I stare at her for a second. She's got big eyes, round, girly cheeks, and a smile that makes you happy just by looking at it. I feel like I came here to check on something, but I've forgotten what, exactly. What's your name? 
I intend to take her back with me as soon as I learn her name. My name is yet to be determined. Yet to be determined. Once I say it myself, I realize she's saying she doesn't have a name, not that that is her name. I'm a little slow on the uptake when it comes to things like that. Ah, oh, jeez. I don't know how ghosts get their names. Do they keep their names from before becoming ghosts, or do they get new ones? Uh, no idea. So, hey, are you two free right now? No, I'm not free right now, but I'm trying to free you. Please run away with me right now. Oh, good. Miss Yet to Be smiles. A carefree smile. I can tell just by looking at her that she's genuinely pleased. Honestly, that's, I think that's a nice trait to have. Then why don't we eat some ham together? It's delicious, you know? You too, Clara. Unfortunately, it seems the new girl's not a good listener. This is plain bad. But I don't repeat myself. After all, there's no use talking to someone who doesn't listen. Can we go after we eat? I shift gears instead. We have to run quick, right? Let's just eat fast so we can run fast, okay? Okay, okay. It's not that she's not listening. This person listens and ignores. That's right, she's the type of person who's tiring to talk to. Does she even understand that she's being held captive or why I'm here? Okay, I get it. Let's eat. There were no rifle shots, just a few pistol shots. The alarm got shut off quickly. We went straight to this room. I made sure that Clara didn't take a roundabout route to buy time. Backup will probably be here before long, but it's not here now. There are many worries in this world, but I know that very few of those worries will actually come true. Clara? Yes? Eat. Like your life depends on it. If I do, will, will you surrender? She says something stupid, so I pistol whip her with the thud. I didn't have time to think about accidental discharge. I didn't have to think about accidental discharge, since the gun's actually already out of bullets. I'll think about it. Now, hurry. Okay. Fresh blood flows out of Clara's nose. This is horrible. <laughs> Ta-da! On the table is a bone-in ham. Its smoky scent can be smelled from steps away. And most of all, its size is overwhelming. Meat is a precious commodity in this town. You would think it'd make sense for ham to be in this town since it's literally dead meat. But despite the fact that you can find freeze-dried, canned, and frozen meats everywhere, you'll rarely see meat as meaty as this. Pacifica lives in such a nice house, and yet I doubt she... I doubt even she could buy something like this. It's too big for me to eat by myself, so I'm glad you two came along. How did you get this? A man gave it to me. The priest? Oh, so that's who he was. <laughs> that's kind of funny. As we sit down at the table, I keep my gun thrust at Clara. Miss Yet to Be doesn't even address the elephant gun in the room. I don't know if she's ignoring it or if she just thinks it is what it is. Everyone's got their quirk. Maybe if you figure out someone's quirk, you can figure them out. But I guess for some people, their quirk is being quirkless. Clara clearly has no appetite for the feast before her. Neither do I, but at this rate, the ham's not going anywhere. And so... If you eat quickly, I'll put the gun down. We shall eat then. Clara reaches for the knife to cut the ham. She awkwardly cuts the ham and starts gulping it down like a garbage truck. Oh, you've got such a good appetite. Miss Yet to Be cheers and pours a bottle into a glass. Let's dig in. I start eating the ham, too. Yep, let's do that. Miss Yet to Be starts eating as well. Ham is a luxury food and is already delicious on its own. There's a certain something that spices it up all the more. For once, I was able to find the answer just a little bit... For once, I was able to find the answer after just a little bit of thinking. It's already bedtime outside. Morning is near. A human might just call this a late night snack. A meal outside of proper meal time. I just remembered that midnight snacks are especially yummy, but I'm sure I'll just forget again soon enough. 
I feel like something like this has happened before, but unfortunately, I can't remember. Ugh. Once I finally managed to swallow an overly thick slice of ham, I let out a big sigh. We finished half of the ham. I'm concentrating. That's a rare occurrence for me. Tonight's just full of rare occurrences. We're eating ham. There's a ham on the table as big as my head. And we're eating it with such gusto in order to escape quickly. The world is silent, save for the clattering of tableware, the chewing of ham, and the occasional cracking of firewood. It's almost as if everything outside this room has been annihilated, and the world exists only for us to eat ham. And when I say us, I mean... me. It's yet to be determined. And a crying Clara with a bloody nose. She's the one eating the most. The situation is very much like a dream. The softness of the high pile rug seems to numb my senses. It's like a dream. I ponder that thought again. The situation we're in is indeed like a dream. But is that a good thing? At least that's what I think to myself as I prod Clara's temple with my gun. Eventually, we finish off the gigantic ham. Oh, that was delicious. Miss yet to be strokes her belly in satisfaction while I try to do my best to keep myself from throwing up. Clara's probably in the same boat, too. You see, Miss yet to be quickly got full and excused herself. Afterwards, she watched us eat and said things like, You two can really eat, and is it good? So Clara and I ended up finishing off the majority of the ham. Now then. Miss yet to be steps up from her chair and claps her hands together. Ring. The stopped alarm starts ringing once again. Please wait here. Clara, if you run away, I'll kill you 9,999 times. I run out of the room and check what's happening outside. I don't sense anyone on this floor. The priest's corpse must have been spotted by now, and it should be clear that I'm the one who killed him. I think to myself, if I were the backup forces, I'd gradually go up the stairs to corner me. There's no time. I rush back to the room and take Clara and the new girl. Oh, my suitcase! Miss yet to be says that right as we're about to leave. No, it'll just hold us back. I'm a tight. I'm in a tight spot here. There's no guarantee that I can protect her and her baggage. Can we come back for it later? I decide to lie. We can come back for it any time. Okay then. Just a little white lie. Huh? It's nothing. A gunshot rings out from a lower floor. They must have found the corpse. After that first shot, several follow after it. Then I hear something break. Sounds like they've got shotguns. That's no good. I guess they must have mistaken something for me. They ought to keep a cooler head. That just goes to show how much they fear the ninja. Good. Excellent. If you people want me to be a ninja, then I'll play the part. Being bloodthirsty is simple. It's kinda nice, actually. Makes you painfully aware that we're dead. The gunshots stop. I hear men's voices. They must be arguing. Maybe they're pretending to clear the area, but I think they should keep it quiet. Sounds pretty dangerous down there. Just yet to be murmurs. Don't worry. I continue. We're going up. If we can't go down, then our only option is to go up. <laughs> I'll show you the ninja's true potential. Miss yet to be leads the way as I threaten Clara to keep going up the stairs. Oof. Clara tumbles, probably not on purpose. Her nose starts to bleed yet again. Maybe she plans to die from, na from nasal blood loss. Over here, fourth floor! But as a result, our pursuers have spotted us. I pick up one girl in each arm and dash up the stairs. I leap through the first door I see without hesitation. They don't chase after us immediately. Maybe they want to be sure they can overwhelm me, or maybe they're just thinking they need to block the center staircase to corner the rat. That's an extremely logical thought. As long as you don't expect the rat to go even higher. What is this room? It's the priest's room. I see. What a lonely little room. Just a big desk and a full-length window. Actually, I guess since there are several lonely little rooms, they're not so lonely or little when put together. I stare out the window. Things don't look so bad outside. In fact, it looks better than I expected. I feel kind of pumped up. 
I'm sure I can pull off what I'm about to attempt. Miss yet to be gleerfully cheers as she jumps onto the soft desk chair. Well, whatever. I've got an idea. Stand here. I place my hand on Kara's shoulder. There's not much of a height difference between us, so our faces are close. I look closely at her face. I'm sorry, Clara. Miss Ninja? You must be cold. Here, you can wear my coat. I take off my coat and am instantly reminded of just how cold this town can be. Now then. Hey, what's the plan? How do we escape? I don't have time to answer, Miss Yet to Be. Any last words? I ask Clara as I hide under the shadow of the desk. With my gun still trained on her, of course. I don't take my eyes off of her. I, um... Clara tries to speak, but she just fidgets and fails to say anything in the end. Time sluggishly crawls on. Miss yet be looks at me with concern. I want to give her some reassuring words, but what comes out of my mouth is anything but trustworthy. Everything will be okay. By the time I say that, the faraway footsteps are already upon us. There's already somewhat... There's already somewhere between six and eight men on the other side of the door, and they must be armed with rifles or other guns. Any last words? I swiffle my head to face in my direction. I'm sorry, but now we're playing on the same field. No, it wasn't me who swiveled her head. It's just Clara, dressed like me, and with a hairstyle similar to mine. But the resemblance is uncanny. I'm sure we'll meet again. Maybe we can be friends then. She does look like me. I hope you'll understand one day. You... What's she going to say? You're crazy? You have no morals? That'd make sense. I've studied human rights, but not ghost rights. Slam. They kick the door in. I do have last words. Clara speaks. Poophead? head. 